実はこれから町に極秘の視察に行くのですあそれで変装をみんなには内緒ですよもしこのことがある All right, so we just got done watching episode number three of Berserk of Gluttony, and this episode was really good and really juicy, but not for the traditional reasons. Traditionally, so far, Berserk of Gluttony has gone for kind of like that awe factor or that shock factor or like that blood and gore factor, sprinkled in with some other, you know, fantasy, a little bit of magic, a little bit of romance into that too, right? But I think episode number three specifically kind of pushed us more towards that romance piece of it here. And in the past three episodes, since Roxy's、uh, not showing, but since. Since she showed up for us, right? So, since she showed up, I have doubted her sincerity and her feelings towards Faye. And in episode three, I think that for whatever reason, I don't think that she has malicious intent towards Faye, which is an interesting notion by itself to really think about because it's like, well, what really drew her? To fate, right? Like, what really drew her to him, especially when he wasn't, you know, cleaned up and dressing well or dressing in an in a okay fashion, right? He was in like, he was dirty and he was in just like the most NPC basic, you know, clothing that's dirty ever. So it's like, What really was it just his personality? Was there something else there? And episode three gave us a glimpse of what it could potentially be. So,、uh, five years ago, Faye tells us that he was also one of these lost kids, just like the kid that they found today, right? And in that, he was apparently found, which is probably why he has some admiration. Uh, for the knights and stuff, but he was found by one of the holy knights who has an uncanny resemblance to. Uh, to Roxy. Now, that uncanny resemblance is either, either one of, I guess, one of three paths, okay? It's either first path, that was her, but then the age gap between them kind of makes me go, like, they seem pretty close, if not like about the same age. So then that one kind of takes me aback, like, it could have been her, you know, and maybe she is, you know, slightly older. Maybe he is, you know, 15, 16, and she is 21, 20, something like that. So there is that chance, okay? So there's that chance that, you know, she is just simply older.、Uh, the second thing is that could have been a sister. Maybe there's a sister、uh, that passed or that is not in the picture anymore, or there could be a sister that looks just like her who also shares the same sentiment and vibes and. And goodwill and stuff like that, that it seemingly seems to be a trait in her family.、Uh, and the third thing is that person that he, we saw save him could have been Roxy's mom, because we, we know about Roxy's dad and how he recently died. And you know, he was a, a holy knight as well, too, blah, blah, blah. That could have been her mom. And she could have also been a holy knight. Maybe something happened to her. Maybe she also passed something crazy happened. There hasn't been any talk about that. So those are the three branching paths. That this could be, but regardless, he seemingly has ties to not only the Hart family, but then, you know, that tie then kind of like leads us into a string of Torch Roxy. So there's definitely something about him that drew in the Hart to him. Now, who he has drawn in outside of Roxy, we'll probably end up finding out later on. So that's the main thing that I really enjoyed about the episode was kind of finding a little bit more about his past, finding his, you know, his、uh, connection to the Hart family. And they kind of see it kind of play out. And then again, the question that that poses. Outside of that, we got to see them spend genuine time. We got to see、uh, Fate's sword get, you know,、uh, polished up.、Uh, I, one of, the, one of the, the, I guess one of my only annoyances, and it's not about this episode, it's just kind of about the premise, is he seemingly unlocked the telepathy、uh, ability and he seemingly can hear the sword through telepathy. But he continues to verbalize his responses to the sword, getting him in some particular situations in this scenario with Roxy. But it's like, because you have that telepathy ability, why haven't you been using that telepathy ability to talk back and forth? That's kind of my one of annoyances about the show. But outside of everything else, I think this episode is really, really good. I enjoyed seeing them spend time together. I enjoy him taking、uh, Roxy to the bar that he always frequents. I love them all assuming that he was dead. They even had like a little flower there, like, you know, don't sit there. That's for our boy or the spirit of our boy, you know, kind of thing. He came back. So that was a whole cool thing there. 
Uh, I like how he was ready to defend her. I like how Roxy, you know, is kind of trying to change the image of of knights. And then as we go to the end of the episode, we do see that the knights are very cultish. Like, they're like a big cult. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're very gross, essentially. So I can't wait to see how that all gets figured out. And then the big cherry on top for the episode was that the fact that fate and his actions are now being considered a monster. So he's either a monster or some kind of entity or being from some other place and now the knights are going to go investigate him and he's going to be able to get a lot more experience if he faces the knights but he did do a good deed because the church or the um you know the foster care uh, place is trying to find who he is to thank him for you know the seemingly huge donation he made to them via the goblinaires and stuff so anyways this episode was really really good i really enjoyed it quite a bit uh, let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below and i'll see you for episode number one two three four next week peace